Hello, everybody, and welcome to Trade the Chain. It is January 18th, uh, around 1.30 Eastern time right now. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm joined by our uh, illustrious crypto analysts, CJ and Monty, from MarketRebellion.com. Uh, yep, there, that's the plug. And uh, <laughs> uh, my co-host, Ryan, is, uh, is currently on vacation for at least the afternoon. Um, but with that all being said, I'll take it to CJ, who's filling in for Ryan's duties as well. Just as a reminder, this is not financial advice. We are not fiduciaries on uh, Trade the Chain. Uh, this is not investment advice and should not be construed as, as such. Um, Trade the Chain is brought to you by Trade the Chain, a uh, sentiment dashboard, a community of advanced to beginner crypto traders all throughout the world sharing uh, victories, defeats, battle scars. Um, and so if you check out the Trade the Chain dashboard, uh, you know you get sentiments in real time, uh, real API data scraped from social media sources all throughout the world. Um, I love using this. It's completely uh, changed my sentiment view of the market. I no longer use coin market cap. I get everything I need on Trade the Chain. So uh, definitely check that out at tradethechain.com. And then moving to our next plug, we have Market Rebellion Crypto. This is Monty and I's community of beginner to advanced traders all throughout the world. And what we do for you guys is we provide uh, trading education, instructional videos on TA, as well as the fundamentals behind Bitcoin, as well as uh, trade insights. We got some of our uh, assets allocated in our macro portfolio. You can also see that. Um, and so a ton of stuff. We also have a charting platform for you guys that I'm going to get into in just a moment here. But if you go to marketrebellion.com slash crypto, you can sign up for just a dollar and get those trade insights uh, in real time from Monty and I. Uh, so please head over and, and do that because we'd, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, this is a little bit about our, our education curriculum. Uh, we're going to try to drop more TA courses in the new future. I think I'm going to be working on a candlesticks one uh, later in the day. Uh, we got member webinars once a week in addition to Trade the Chain where you can ask us individual questions. We also have our trade insights listed right here um, and down to our platform to discuss Bitcoin and uh, market collection. I don't know, CJ. It looked like you you rushed over the part that showed your grades. Um, I, you know, I saw 50% complete. I don't know. Were you passing? That educational platform, or are you still behind? I wrote it, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, where are we with Bitcoin? Um, it, it, we're just sitting at just over a trillion dollars in market cap. We're here in the 35 range. And once again, people are starting to get a little bored because of all the sideways trading. Or what are we looking at? So I want to discuss this from an objective standpoint. Uh, not to say our, our previous streams aren't objective, but what I mean by that is I want to look at both the bullish and the bearish case in this instance, because uh, the one thing that I will say is bullish from a four hour perspective and from a, a shorter term time frame is the fact that we have created a higher low right here at about 34,000, 35,000. So um, to me, in order for the bullish momentum conti to continue, it's all about breaking above the prior swing highs. So we're in this kind of symmetrical triangle. I was pointing to it saying it was more of a bearish descending triangle last week, but since we've made that higher low, it's kind of more of a, a neutral triangle right now. So I'm watching for a break uh, between those levels. If we break down, it's obviously gonna probably be much more bearish. Um, but what I said here, what I will kind of uh, allude to is just we're watching for a break above previous highs. I think if we can break above 40K here, then the bulls will likely have enough momentum to drive us up even to higher price levels because we do have these Fibonacci levels up at 45K and 62K, and it is possible to go up and hit those. Um, I don't think it's likely that we will, uh, but what I'm seriously looking here from a bullish perspective is we, uh, you know, this is like the classic CJ trade, buy above a break above a previous high. So we get above 40K here, you know, buy the breakout. I did that a lot with XMR and uh, just recently with VGX. Um, but that's what we're looking for for the bullish case. 
Now the bearish case, in my opinion, is uh, quite more compelling. And the reason for that is uh, largely due to sentiments and just where we are in the overall market cycle. We know we're overbought on the RSI on the weekly. We have our first bearish divergence on the weekly RSI, which is not a good sign. And what I want to show you guys is that, you know, in bull trends, we stay above the top uh, band, the top Bollinger band. You know, we trend above for, for quite a few weeks in bull markets. Uh, but when we first break below it, we almost always go back and touch the middle band. And so on the weekly chart, I'm very cautious and very nervous and, and paying attention to this closely because we got our first weekly candle today that is a below the top band. So that's a pretty bearish signal. And it all comes back to, uh, do I have this up here? Damn, I had the Wall Street cheat sheet outlined about the euphoria stage and then the complacency stage, but the, cons the complacency stage occurs right now because I feel as if the collective market is in this phase where we're like, we had incredible bullish momentum and now we're cooling off and everybody kind of has this mentality where it's like, okay, we kind of have to cool off before the market can go up further. But I just, I don't think that's likely based on Google Trends data, based on the fact that we're putting in a, uh, a lower high here after our recent uptrend. And the last thing that I'll, I'll go to here before I pass things to Monty is the CME gaps on CME Bitcoin futures. And this has not been something that I've shown uh, lately, but it's something that I do want to bring up and pay attention to. So what I have highlighted here is a bunch of different CME gaps that uh, occurred throughout time. And Bitcoin doesn't create gaps because it's traded 24 seven, but the CME is only traded at certain specific hours. So price will gap up and then uh, you know, gap down in a bearish uh, case, for instance. But nearly all of these gaps, like 95% of these gaps, all eventually get filled in which price comes back and goes in between where price had previously gapped. And if we go to our current points, uh, you know, these gaps are, are pretty far down. They're at like 23K, and this one's even at 19K. So I don't think we're going all the way to 19K, but I think you know, at least a gap fill between here and 28 to 26 K might be a likely uh, target zone. And right, like it comes back to what we talked about last week of the, uh, the honey hole accumulation zone. Um, but that's ultimately what I'm seeing, right? Like we just, we got so overextended and now we're putting in these, these warning shots, you know, high, uh, lower high, you know, um, overextend close below the weekly Bollinger Band. These are all very strong warning signs from a bearish perspective to me. So we could certainly go up and test those higher levels like 40, 50K based on a break above the previous high. I just don't think that's likely. I think it's much more likely that we come down into these lower price channels for a further uh, chance to accumulate. Yeah, I, I think you laid out a great case for the bearish argument. And I just want to quickly elaborate on one point you made that I think is really important and it's particularly evident right now. And that's kind of recognizing what point you're at in a market cycle and kind of recognizing when you've transitioned from euphoria to complacency and what, what signs to look for when that happens. And like you said, I think the biggest indication here was that we put in that lower high. If we would have been able to break our previous high and maybe set a, a new higher high at 42, 43 K, the euphoria may have been continuing. But based on the momentum of the market currently, it seems to me like we're entering this complacency stage. We weren't able to break above the previous swing high. Uh, the market is kind of continuing in the downtrend. And like CJ pointed out, there are many um, indicators, both on the weekly perspective, daily perspective, and even on um, some of the smaller timeframes that are indicating that this is still largely overbought. So in my opinion, the momentum has kind of been lost a little bit. And I think that's an indication that we're switching from this wave of euphoria into a, a plateau of complacency. And look, I, at how, look at how, you know, what we had at 14K. Nearly the exact same type of top, you know, higher low, or excuse me, lower high following the previous top. So 
Yeah, it's just, it's a very strong warning sign. Sorry, go ahead, Alex. No, no, no. I mean, well, let me ask you this. Do we think that the retail FOMO that swarmed in right before uh, going to 40,000, where you probably had a bunch of retail people painting the top of that market, um, and then a whole bunch of consolidation as they were getting shooken out, do you think that shook up the retail investor? And 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 second part of that is, is is our is our forward looking thought as dire as we're heading towards capitulation in this market? I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it dire. I think, like you said, a lot of the retail FOMO traders have been shaken out already because a lot of them bought in at right around forty k uh, when the trading volume was ridiculously high, and I think a lot of them kind of panicked and got out, like we've talked about in the past. They don't really have as steady hands as the institutions or some of the bigger whales, but I don't think it's a dire situation. I think it's just kind of the natural project uh, trajectory of the market. Um, retail traders buy in and some of them will capitulate, but some of them will hold their Bitcoin. And eventually when we enter another bull cycle, those people will become profitable. And I think uh, although we're kind of entering this bearish downtrend, this last month has obviously been great for Bitcoin in the in the sense that its awareness is at an all time high, number of active users is at an all time high. So although we may be in for some sideways price action, there's still a lot of important metrics that came along with that retail FOMO. And, and one thing I want to add to Monty's points, uh, I think he makes a great point, and I don't uh, I don't agree that it's like dire. However, coming from a background of like traditional finance or traditional stocks. We could definitely see a 30 to 40 percent correction down to 22k, and that would be perfectly normal uh, from Monty and I's perspective. Yet, a 30 to 40 percent correction to traditional people entering the space, especially those new retail uh, individuals, you know, that's that's a that's a tough thing to hold through. And a lot of optimism and belief of Bitcoin after a drop like that, you know, it could shake a lot of people off. So we'll have to yeah. see how extreme it goes, but I don't I don't consider it uh, a dire pullback. Listen, if we go through a 30, 40 percent correction, we start and we head down towards those 20, 22,000 uh, numbers. I mean, I, I'm I'm all I'm piling more in. I'm adding to the uh, to the bags because m my feeling is that, listen, we've already seen where it can go right so there's no more guessing where it can go like when we were heading upwards through 20 25 30 we're like oh how high is this going to go we've seen where it can go we know that it has the capability to go back there more and to your point monty uh ad ad adoption through um uh you know hearing about it and putting it out there in the market bitcoin is becoming more mainstay uh than it was this time last year and and twice or so as the year before so all right, let's, let, we're going to cover one coin today. Um, it's going to be Elrond. And this, this just got listed on Voyager. Um, EGLD is the ticker. And it is uh, pegged, uh, <clears throat> it's gold, pegged, uh, tokenized gold. Uh, CJ Monty, can you explain a little bit more about uh, just to overview the project, like what it is and, and what the charts are saying, because we don't have a lot of data just yet on it, do we? Yeah, not a whole lot of data and not really a whole lot of information about the project itself. It is relatively novel. But what I do know is that um, their consens consensus mechanism is going to be a secured proof of stake. And also they're designing this network to be highly developer friendly. So I think um, I think their goal is to kind of create this network of um, of developers that are working on this round the clock that create a secure and efficient way to just uh, dole out smart contracts. And um, yeah, that's essentially it. You can also stake. Um, so that's going to be largely important for Elrond. Um, it's kind of like their final stage before the mainnet launch. So all their e-gold holders are incentivized to support the network and the mainnet launch um, just by locking their e-gold into a smart contract. And um, once they reach that economic security threshold, that's when the mainnet will launch. So you can actually currently earn some staking rewards by staking on Elrond, um, but it's still like, like, we, uh, like we noted with the chart, there's not much data on the price. It was just recently listed on Voyager, which was huge. 
Um, I saw it on Trade the Chain. The sentiment data was just going absolutely crazy. I think the um, relative tweet volume was up like 2,000%. The trade volume was up something like 300%. So um, yeah, wow. it, it was really, really popping on Trade the Chain. And I think that's just because, well, one, because of the Voyager listing, obviously it's uh, big news. That's a great way to make it available. But I think it just brought a lot more eyes onto it um, because of that listing. And I think people are actually seeing some possible potential here. What do the, what do the charts look like uh, young into this uh, life right now? Well, we have about six days of data on Voyager. So it's a little difficult to tell. Uh, quite a lot of bullish price action here going all the way down to about 30 and then bouncing to a high of roughly 40. So this thing's got some legs for now, it looks like. Uh, but uh, there, there's nothing really to go off of in terms of like a sustained trend. So uh, I'm just going to watch this very closely. There was another one called Avalanche, another uh, cryptocurrency project listed on Voyager about a month or two ago that has done uh, very well as well. So uh, keep an eye out for these new Voyager listings because, uh, you know, they're, they're not just listing random projects. Like they're, they're listening, listing them for a reason. Um, Avalanche, I've seen, I've seen it at, towards the top on Trade the Chain a couple of times now. Um, we have been asked about uh, covering Avalanche, which is ticker AVA, AVAX, um, <clears throat> and is right now, looks like we have a 283% pr a 30 day price change on this already. Um, but yeah, it's been bouncing around the top half of the sentiment charts. What's, what are the, uh, what are the technicals looking like? Looks pretty bullish. Um, I mean, this looks like an emerging asset that people have just discovered because it really didn't do anything before the Voyager price listing. It was, you know, hovering around two to four dollars, you can see here. But then shortly after, wow. only like a month or two after the Voyager listing, we went all the way up and are now at 13 bucks. Uh, might pull back from this parabolic uptrend, but it's definitely not over yet or it's not showing any signs of weakness, I should probably say. So oh, uh, short term trade. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So Eldron and AVAX, uh, interesting price action for the new ones, uh, for the newly listed Voyager assets. <laughs> Listen, we had to, uh, we had to get Voyager into this episode somehow without actually touching, uh, any of the coin charts uh, for it. But, um, guys, thanks for joining us today and we will see you again tomorrow where we will probably, and um, start the uh, this week's fifty dollar Bitcoin giveaway. So um, tomorrow will be the day to enter that. Uh, until then, hang on to your handlebars. Happy trading. Happy hodling. And CJ, Matt, thank you. <laughs>